Let's cover the characters of Twilight, shall we? Here's what I think. Just what I think. I don't know. Bella appears to be somebody that cannot take any kind of control uh, in her life. As a matter of fact, it seems like the kind of control she does take is to spin it harder. Because I think what she's trying to attract is somebody with such a rigid uh, life that she could be like a crazy growing vine and uh, just kind of out of control except for uh, her partner is going to be like a trellis and uh, she'll grow up that framework and be unable to grow any other direction other than uh, the direction her partner has uh, built for her and uh, it's almost like she, it's like her partner is going to be a lifeline to her uh, some sort of uh, life buoy in the storm and the storm of her own creation uh, rather than develop her own uh, skills uh, in, uh, in how to have a sorted out uh, drama-less uh, existence and then I don't think it's uh, then the two boys and I don't think it's uh, it's not an accident that she became uh, attracted to these two boys both have uh, a kind of rigid and uh, directed uh, persona even though you, you know the werewolf um, comes off as so easy going so let's cover him next let's cover the were werewolf um, he is a uh, rather than a trellis uh, made of steel he's a steel doormat um, he, he's providing a platform and a pedestal uh, for Bella to stand on and uh, He's going to hold her up and not uh, pay attention to any of the any of the spinning. It'll be uh, he'll try to control it, um, but ignore it because uh, he, he just wants what he wants, and he's willing to say and do whatever it takes to get it. Um, but mostly, it seems to me uh, to be denying himself. Um, you can't just always uh, uh, just. You know, be whatever this person needs you to be. You have to be yourself, and you can't hold somebody up on a pedestal or provide some sort of like firm basis underneath them. That's their own responsibility. And then, if at any point in time, like you can't provide that, you know, werewolf uh, for Bella, um, if things get a little unstable, she's gonna spin out even harder um, and kind of directed at you because she was looking and relying on you for uh, that stability. So, uh, so, so Bella, you've, uh, you've, uh, you want the, you want the werewolf, um, cause absolutely safe though, right? Absolutely safe. You know, that's a, that's a dream. Um, nobody is, uh, is 100%, uh, giving and supportive all the time. Uh, and the people who try to provide that are going to overextend themselves. They're going to let themselves down. They're going to let you down and there'll be some disaster. Um, and I imagine resentment on both sides. Now let's get to the uh, the pervert vampire. <laughs> All right, so over a hundred years old. I can't remember what he said his, his actual age was. Um, and in all that time, the absolute best cover he could come up with is being a perpetual high school student. That's the best. Decade after decade after decade, you're like, you know, I just can't think of uh, any other way to uh, disguise the fact that I live forever than to continuously enroll in high school. All right, bull. <laughs> I've just thought about it a couple minutes, and I could think of a ton of different uh, ways uh, to live a, a, a kind of a normal-seeming life uh, and also live in forever. So if, you know, if the reason doesn't match the actions, if it just seems a little bit uh, uh, false... Um, what's he doing in the high school? And then, uh, I would, I would almost want to say, what, why is he attracted to Bella? Um, because I know why she's attracted to him, because, uh, he's just, I mean, he's got it worked out. I mean, he's hundreds of years old, uh, and he's a, a man of routine. You know, because, you know, he has, to, he has to live a lie, um, and his lie is his way of life. And so, uh, routine is key. Uh, being deceptive, um, 
and then you know hiding your true nature though so, uh, you know I mean I see his reasons but still um, say uh, Bella and her vampire boyfriend are on a really long car trip um, now everything she's gonna talk to him is uh, it's gonna be old news uh, well, she's becoming a woman, uh, she's becoming an adult, uh, she's uh, dealing with, uh, she's, she's still dependent on her family um, to, you know, raise her and house her and feed her and for structure and whatnot. And uh, so, I mean, you would think, after all this time, uh, the vampire, unless there's another reason, would know not to date high school girls. I know she's like, has some sort of really awesome smell and uh, some sort of mental power that keeps uh, um, him out of her head for some reason. And you're like, uh, you're like, oh, being out of, not being able to hear someone's thoughts is so peaceful. So I'm just gonna hang out with a teenager as much as possible. Ta -da! <laughs> yeah. So, to sum up, the only man of the entire uh, show was uh, Bella's dad. Um, he was he was all things. He was supportive uh, and demanding, uh, caring uh, and angry. You know, uh, he a uh, full spectrum human being. Um, you know, when you're wanting things one way, accepting of another, uh, brave uh, in the service of others, um, willing to do uh, what he thinks. It takes to do the best thing he can for his uh, daughter. So uh, I, uh, you know, he was he was a little bit, eh, you know, because he was unsure of himself. Um, but I mean, that's 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 who we are. That's who human beings are. And I guess that's why the uh, the vampire and the werewolf uh, were so attractive to Bella, because she felt so unstable that a normal human being like her father or a normal high school boy. Um, couldn't provide that massive steel structure that her uh, her personality, oddly enough, it's hard to describe uh, her as uh, having much of a personality because um, she seems just to reflect uh, others' personalities um, rather than uh, develop one of her own. Thus, when you know the boy's attention was removed, um, she did nothing. Uh, she sat around. Uh, didn't even hang out with her friends. Wasn't even interested in her friends anymore. You know, like her friends were just a vehicle uh, to perhaps meet a boy. So, yeah, I know we're all thinking about it. I think we should talk about it. It's the only, it's the only way we're going to uh, come to grips with this whole Twilight uh, debacle. All right. Now you have my thoughts. See you in the new moon.